Good morning. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. <laughs> Are you shocked with the avatar? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I came in late because I was like writing some really thoughtful comments on Reddit, as I am a dirty redditor. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not trolling anyone. I'm just giving them mental health advice, even though I'm trying to kill myself every day. But aside from that, yes, I was late to start my stream because. <laughs> I was typing on Reddit. Yeah. Can you guys hear me whistle at all? Truly enlightened because of the maid outfit. That was another maid outfit that's a lot more um, fetish-ish. I don't really want that for my for myself. I reserve the fetish part for my IRL. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's only Zapok here, huh? Anyone here, raise your hands. Some I know that sometimes fucking Twitch doesn't really tell you if there's someone here. But I know Beat probably like have not wake up yet. Zelon probably not awake yet. Uh, I know DN is not here because DN is participating in a super cycling contest uh, competition. I hope he wins big, man. You know, I... I bought like this earbuds, this Bluetooth earbuds, and uh, I try to like, because you know how every time I try to like get out from my seat and then I get tangled with my ear, my uh, with my uh, wired earbuds, and um, I thought that maybe this time today I can be enlightened and um, use my uh, Bluetooth earbuds, but somehow. Uh, while I can connect to my PC, it just doesn't detect it as an audio. It just detects it as a Bluetooth device. By the way, speaking of Bluetooth device, my car Bluetooth connection thing. I bought a new one, like maybe like re recently, but not super recent, like maybe a month ago. Um, I remember many years ago when I first like realized that oh you can actually like buy a Bluetooth device and plug it into your the smoker thingy in the car I forgot the I don't know what's it called and then uh, because it's like a made in China device so the the, <laughs> the voice of the person speaking like when your device is connected and all she speaks like in like this super Chinese accent like. Your Bluetooth de device is connected. Uh, something like that. I could do a better impression, but I'm tired. <laughs> Every fucking morning I'm tired because I wake up at 6! Why? Why do I wake up at 6? Why can't I sleep any later than that? It's terrible. I hate it. Anyway. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, so I changed to another one, but that one uh, doesn't have the... Your Bluetooth device is connected uh, successfully. Um, it has like a proper English one, or just like... Yeah, it, it speaks in proper English. And then, But that one is like dying, so I went to like get a new one. And uh, I don't know, maybe it's like... Maybe, maybe the, the universe just know that how much I miss the... Your Bluetooth device is connected uh, successfully. Uh, so the new Bluetooth device that I got for my car to connect to my phone to play songs is now speaking in that excellent English. Uh, 
Yeah. A little personal anecdote there. Um, good morning, lurker. Um, <laughs> I usually chit chat before I start. Oh yeah, today I have decided from my enlightenment process, I'm going to wear just my pajamas to read this shit. Like usually I will like, you know, okay, I'm gonna like w get out of my bed and then like, you know, wear my daily clothing. And then today I'm just like, fuck this man, and my pajamas is too comfortable, man. You know, you guys have to try silk pajamas. It's like, not silk. This silk is very expensive, right? You guys gotta try satin pajamas or satin bed shit. Holy shit, those shit are excellent. Like, if you have on satin pajamas on top of a satin bed shit, oh my god. That will, you will be sleeping in paradise, I'll tell you. I'll tell you that for sure right now. Anyway, no one is here. Should I start reading? Sometimes I like don't know when to start because it's like if I start now there's not a lot of people in here yet and then they all miss the opening of the book and then they come in and then they're like Huh But yeah. Does I always give like a five minutes like buffer time to go live and then after that like about ten minutes chit chat but I've also been told that ten minutes chit chat is like fucking boring. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways. Lurkers. Lurkers, lurkers. Sh I don't think it's a lurker. I think it's a bot. Or something. That's usually a bot. In the stream. It's weird. Is that book is a bot? Twisty is a bot. For sure. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, have you been in like? Did you find me on tw Twitch or did you find me in game? Curious, because you are not first time. I'm sorry if I can't remember who you are because there are like people in game always have different uh Twitch name, so I I don't know if I know you. Ah, PF a while ago. Good. That's nice. You you're not in game now, right? That's okay. You can listen. It's okay. It's okay. I I'm not forcing you to chat. I'm just curious. Like I'm just curious of the life of BB Pat. Pad Thai. I love Pad Thai. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. I really appreciate it. Even though my voice sounds like shit right now. Well, I'm tired because I had a oh the cat reading in the poem. Okay, yeah. I think people enjoy that as well. What are you doing right now? Are you studying or are you working right now? Uh, it's okay. I'm always dirt as well. Okay, since you're studying, you, you're sorry, since you're working, and I shall be your, and it shall, and I shall be almost lunchtime. Ah, uh, you are definitely Australian. Oh no 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 no! If you say it's almost lunchtime. Then it's like you must be Singaporean for sure. BBHK, you could be Hong Kong. I don't know. Oh no! Thai is also one hour ahead of me. Wait, Thai? Hong Kong! I knew it. 
Why would you let people know where you are on your name? Change it. <laughs> I'm so demanding. <laughs> Change it. <laughs> Change your name. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for being here. I'm surprised as a Hong Kong person. Ni hao ma. Wo hai gong gong yan nei ge. Wo hai a ma ma loi wa kiu wo gong dong yan. Wo gong wo gong dong wa hao tang ma. <笑>我屋企人是说广东话的但是我是不懂中文的我是不懂写和不懂读中文的我是我就是不懂讲广东话和多少话语因为马来西亚我们有说很多种的语言所以我是懂得英文马来文广东话 啊，华语同埋福建话。诶，我好开心诶，终于有人识听我讲广东话啦。哈哈哈哈哈哈。But I don't know. Oh, really? I have good pronunciation. Kisamhaiga,我一个讲,我一个讲讲讲讲讲讲讲讲讲讲讲讲讲讲讲讲讲讲讲讲讲讲讲讲讲讲讲讲讲讲讲讲讲讲讲讲讲讲讲讲讲
Good morning, Ando. Are you having fun listening to me just speaking in Cantonese out of, out of nowhere? <laughs> Good morning, guys. I'm like talking to Bibi in Cantonese because I'm very happy to find someone who can understand Cantonese. Yeah. So like, like, BB underscore HK, uh, when you say it in uh, Cantonese, it's not BB, it's BB. <laughs> BB. It means baby in Cantonese. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Oh, this I got away. You know, it's funny, like... Oh, you're Malay? You're Abangke? You're Abangke or you're Adik? I think, I think you're Adik. Because... Because I feel... I feel like... Uh, oh my god, I don't even know how to say younger. In Malay, my Malay, I used to be better in Malay than English. Now I'm just, now I'm just flexing my language ability, man, bro. This is not even a fucking reading session anymore. I'm just flexing my language ability. Ando, abang ando ka ati ando. I rasa, I rasa ati ando. Well, Hong Kong is not particularly Singapore because Singaporean speaks Mandarin. Okay. I rasa ando around age late twenties. Sebab tak mungkin you above thirty, I rasa lah. I got got you. See, I found that out. I tahu, I tahu, I tahu. Budak, I tahu. Budak Melayu suka sangat kalau budak Cina tahu cakap bahasa Melayu macam ni. <laughs> Tapi ada di sekolah kebangsaan. Tapi kan, uh, bukan semua orang Cina dari sekolah kebangsaan tahu cakap bahasa Melayu macam ni. Tak banyak lah. Banyak tapi tak tak lah sampai comfortable macam ni. Saya rasa lah. Anyway, ah, you dari Singapore. Kenapa tak berbual dekat rumah? Tak pula, berbual lah dengan saya. Tapi memang macam tu kan, sebab kamu sebab kamu tak belajar bahasa Melayu dekat sekolah kan, dekat uh, di Singapore. Itu ejaan berapa pun dah salah. <laughs> Itulah, kesian lah macam ni. Macam saya lah. Bahasa Cina, second language. Kalau orang, Mal kalau orang Malaysia, kalau orang Malaysia, bahasa Melayu tu first language. Sebab kami belajar semua subjek dalam bahasa Melayu. Lepas tu bahasa English tu second language. Tapi sekarang saya punya English uh, lebih baik dari bahasa Ing uh, Melayu I. Sebelum ni bahasa Melayu I lebih bagus dari, dari bahasa English I. Like kar dalam karangan ke apa. Good morning, bit. Are you confused?
Are you confused? <laughs> I, I haven't read yet. I'm not reading a Malay book, don't worry. <laughs> oh, <and laughs> everyone is like. <laughs> everyone is so surprised that I'm a maid. Why? I'm just following the theme of the book, bruh. <laughs> Bit, I'm just flexing my language ability right now. I'm like speaking Cantonese to B to BB and then I'm speaking Malay to Ando. My Malay might be better than yours. I don't know. Your Malay heritage. Don't say it. don't say I'm delicious. That's a bit eh. Nice author. I'm not an author too, by the way. I'm just a reader. I don't write these books. Just wasn't expecting it. You know who I think that I will enjoy Mate Nuna the most? The end. But the end's not here unfortunately. The end has a super cycle uh Oh yeah, holy shit. The pseudonym. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I thought that you're saying that it's me. Siapa termakan cili tu terasa. Tapi tak ada cili pun. I pun terasa. Bodoh kan? <laughs> okay, good morning, six viewers. Uh, I have flexed enough of my language ability and I'm going... <laughs> I'm going to start reading the book now. <laughs> hey, durian is fucking yummy, okay? Don't nobody say anything bad about durian or I'll kill you. Okay, give me about two seconds. I'll drink my tea and I'll start reading the book. I'll be alright. Already poured tea all over my book. That's great. <coughs> Today, <laughs> let me see properly. Today, we are reading sweet. Bean Paste by Durian Sakegawa Chapter 1 <clears throat> A sweetly scented breeze blew along Cherry Blossom Street. Sentaro stood over a hot griddle inside the Doraharu shop, as he did all day, every day, cooking pancakes for his dorayaki. Cherry Blossom Street was a run-down commercial strip in a depressed part of town, a street more notable for empty shops than the cherry trees planted sparsely on the either side. Today, however, Perhaps because the flowers were in full bloom, there were more people about than usual. Sentaro looked up to see an elderly lady in a white hat standing on the roadside, but immediately turned back to the bowl of batter he was mixing. He assumed she was looking at the billowing cloud of cherry blossom on the tree outside the shop. When he, look, when he next looked up, however, she was still there. And it wasn't the flowers, but rather Sentaro himself that seemed to be observing. He nodded automatically in greeting. The woman smiled stiffly and shuffled closer. Sentaro recognized her face. 
She had been at the shop a few days earlier. About this, she said, raising her hand with a slow, deliberate motion to the point at a help wanted notice taped to the window. Do you really mean age is no object? Sentara paused in his work. He noticed that her fingers were bent like hooks. Got someone in mind? A grandchild, perhaps? The woman blinked one eye. A gentle gust of wind shook the tree, setting a drift petals that wafted through the open window to land on the griddle. Mm. She leaned forward. I wonder if I could apply. Pardon? She pointed to herself. Can I apply? I always wanted a job like this. Sentaro laughed before she, he could stop himself. <laughs> May I ask how old you are? I am 76. How could she send her away without causing offense? Sentaro scraped the spatula on the edge of the bowl. While he groped for the right words. Well, uh, the pay is not much. Uh, I can only manage 600 yen an hour. Uh, sorry? What's that? The woman cupped her hand around her ear. Sentaro leaned over the way he did when he handed dorayaki to children and elderly customers. I said, um, the pay is not much. I appreciate the offer, but I'm not sure at your age. Oh, you mean the pay? She ran her bent fingers over the words on the notice. I'll do it for half that. 300 yen. 300 yen? The woman's eye crinkled in a smile beneath the brim of her hat. Ah, I think... No, I'm afraid it won't work. I hope you understand. My name is Tokue Yoshi. Sorry? Sentaro realized that she must ha be hard of hearing and misunderstood. He shook his head to signal his meaning. I do apologize. Oh? Tokue Yoshi stared at Sentaro. He noticed that her eyes were different shapes. One side of her face appeared stiff. It's heavy work, you know. It will be a bit... Tokie opened her mouth as if to take a deep breath, then suddenly pointed behind her. Who planted this cherry tree? Pardon? The cherry tree. She repeated, turning her face towards the blossoms. Who planted it? Sentaro looked up at the flowers, now at their peak. What do you mean who? Somebody must have planted it. Uh, sorry, don't know. I don't come from around here. Unspoken thoughts flitted across Tokue's face. But... Seeing Sentaro up, pick up the rubber spatula, spatula, she simply said, I'll see you again, and back away from the window. She walked off in the opposite direction from the train station with, a, with an awkward, stiff gait. Sentaro looked down and went back to his mixing. Chapter 2 That's fast. Doraharu opened for business seven days a week, all year round. Every morning, come 11 o'clock, Sentaro would raise the shutters for the day. He usually donned his cook's cloth clothes just two hours before opening time to begin preparing the pancake batter and the sweet bean paste for making dorayaki. Most, most confectioners spent longer than that, but things were done differently at Doraharu. Today, 
like any other day, Sentaro drank his regular morning can of coffee, then proceeded to kick push a cardboard box into the kitchen from the pavement outside. It contained a delivery of Chinese made tzubuan, the coarse sweet bean paste that he used for his dorayaki filling. His late boss had always used ready made bean paste, and Sentaro simply continued the practice. A friendly wholesaler regularly delivered the 5 kilogram boxes of it. Sentaro took a plastic tub from inside and set about mixing the contents of the leftover bean paste from the, from the day before. Operations at Doraharu relied heavily on the fact that the bean paste could be refrigerated for short periods without too much loss of aroma or quality. Although it was not illegal, to recycle the filling in this fashion, this was not exactly standard procedure with most confectioners. But that was how things were done at Doraharu, a business that did just enough trade to stay afloat. Sentaro never saw enough to use up a whole container of bean paste in one day. There were always leftovers. Every morning, he combined the previous day's leftover bean paste with a new batch so that the, eventually it all got used up. Once the bean paste was ready, Sentaro began preparing the batter. This was also available for supply by wholesalers, but it was expensive, so he preferred to make it himself. He heaped the ingredients in a bowl, mixed them together, and turned on the gas to heat the flat griddle. When the temperature was right, he carefully ladled spoonfuls of batter onto the hot surface with a gong-shaped spoon, from which dorayaki took their name, dora for gong and yaki for grilled. Once the small fluffy pancakes were ready, to, were ready he arranged them in rows in a heated glass case to keep warm. Now, it was time to open. Sentaro sighed as he lifted the shutters from inside, a blank expression on his face. Lunchtime came. Sentaro was sitting in the shop's kitchen picking at a lunch from the, from, from the convenience store when he saw a white hat appear on the other side of the window. The old lady, he muttered. He was, she was smiling at him. And he felt obliged to stand up. Uh, hello again. Hello. Can I do something for you? Tokue pulled a piece of paper from her handbag. This is how I write my name. Huh? Sentaro glanced at the paper. Her name was written in blue ink in a distinctive style with every stroke form with by a curling flourish. Sorry, he said, but you still cannot work here. He pushed the paper back to her. Tokue went to pick it up with her bent fingers, but then seemed to change her mind and gently withdrew her hand. As you can see, I have a bit of trouble with my fingers, so I don't mind working for less than I said last time. 200 yen will do. For what? My hourly pay? That's not the issue. Sentaro repeated what he said before about not being able to hire her. Tokue's reaction was to simply stare back at him like last time. Sentaro stepped away from the counter and reached into the warmer to take out a dorayaki. He thought that if he gave her one, maybe she would go away. Do you make the bean paste yourself? Tokue suddenly asked, as if she had read his mind. Um, that's um, a, a trade secret, Sentaro replied, his Adam's apple bobbing nervously. Has she seen something? He looked over his shoulder to check. The top of sweet bean paste was sitting in a plain view on the kitchen bench next to his lunch, with the lid off and a spoon sticking out to boot, Sentaro shuffled sideways to block Tokue's view. I had one of your dorayaki the other day. The pancake wasn't too bad. I thought, but the bean paste, well... 
the bean paste? Yes, I couldn't tell anything about the feelings of the person who made it. You couldn't? That's strange. Sentaro made a face as if to show how regrettable that was, though he knew full well his bean paste could reveal no such thing. It was sort of lacking. Uh, bean paste is very difficult, you know. Uh, listen, lady, uh, ma'am, have you ever made it? I certainly have. I've been making it for. I've been making bean paste for fifty years. Sentaro almost dropped the dorayaki he was about to put in the paper bag. Fifty years? Yes, half a century. Bean paste is all about feelings, young man. Oh, feelings, eh? Sentaro said as he pushed the dorayaki package towards Tokue. For one fleeting moment, he felt buffered as if by a sudden gust of wind. But... He hesitated. Sorry, I still cannot hire you. Really? I'm sorry, that's how it is. Tokue stared at him with her mismatched eyes, then pulled a cloth purse from her handbag. That's okay, he said. It's on the house. Why? It costs 140 yen, doesn't it? She fumbled about in her purse to extract the coin. It took some time for her to find a hundred yen coin and four ten yen coins, then line them up on the narrow counter beneath the window. Every finger was slightly crooked and her thumb was bent backward. Young man. What? Tokue rummaged in her bag again. Try some of these, she said, pulling out a round Tupperware container in a plastic bag. Sentaro could see through the bag that it contained a dark substance. What is it? As Sentaro picked up the container, Tokue began edging away from the counter. Is this bean paste? But she was already gone, and only turned back to give a quick nod before disappearing around the corner. Chapter 3 that night, Sentaro went out for a drink. He chose a noodle shop in the downtown area where he ordered warm sake accompanied by a small side dish of tempura and soba noodles in a hot broth. Over sips of sake inter interspersed with mouths full of food, he thought about the day's event. After Tokue's departure, Sentaro had tossed the Tupperware container straight into the rubbish bin. It wasn't as if he didn't feel bad about doing this. He just didn't want to get in any deeper. Every time he lifted the bin lid, however, it, meet, it met his eyes, until eventually he was moved to fish it out. He, it, he intended to have a small taste, just a mouthful, to satisfy his conscience and be done with it. But that one mouthful brought an exclamation of astonishment to his lips. Tokue's bean paste was nothing like he had ever tasted before. It had a rich aroma and sweetness that spread across his palate. The substance he bought in plastic containers could not compare. 50 years, eh? He mused lifting the sake cup to his lips again and recalling the taste which had so unexpectedly rooted him to the spot. She has been making it longer than I have been alive. He looked at the restaurant menu tacked to the wall. The noodle chef had written it himself with a brush, and whenever Sentaro saw the careful calligraphy, it always reminded him of his, of his mother. The old lady must have been the same age as mom. In his mind, he saw his mother's small frame seated at low floor table. Her shoulders rounded as she bent over, writing deftly on the stationery spread out before her. Sentaro tended to cut memories short at this point. Usually, 
He tried not to think about his long dead mother and the father he had not seen in a decade. Tonight, however, he couldn't manage to keep the memories at bay. An image of, um, of the mother who had taught him to read and write as a small boy refused to leave his mind. Oh, hell. Sentaro expelled a stream of sake-laden breath. By the time he was out, of, out from behind bars, his mother was no longer in this world. You never knew what the future held, he mused. Look at the path he had ended up on. Instead of becoming a writer as he hoped, and how he had passed the day, these days, these last few years, standing in front of a griddle cooking dorayaki. Never once had he imagined himself doing that. Sentaro filled his cup with more sake and gulped down the strong alcohol without pause, as if to wash away the bitterness that had built up in his mouth. Memories of his mother? She was softly spoken but troubled by anxieties beneath the surface that she could not conceal. Then there were the loud disputes with his father and arguments with relatives that made her cry and scream. As a child, Sentaro had been frightened by this outburst. That's why he had wished there could always be cake on the table. Because his mother had sweet tooth. And whenever they had the sweet things that she liked, such as manju buns or cake, she would be in a good mood and he could f also feel at peace. He loved his mother when she smiled and said to him, Hmm, isn't this delicious, Sen? Again, he thought of Tokue Yoshi's remarkable bean paste. He tried to imagine his mother's expression if she had still been alive to taste it. What would she have said? This, led, this thought led to another. Maybe there were people who would be pleased by it. And he added to himself, it would only cost 200 yen an hour. Was the old lady really serious? If that's all she wanted, maybe he could help her out. Sentaro considered the possibility. He didn't have the notice in the windows because business was so busy he needed help. He simply wanted somebody around for company. Dorayaki weren't much of as conversation partners. Would the old lady really take 200 yen? He did the calculations in his drink fuddled head. If he paid Tokue Yoshi the amount he proposed, it would be as good as free labor. On top of which, he would get that amazing sweet bean paste thrown in. Then, if sales went up as a result, he might be able to increase his monthly debt repayments. That, and that would mean he could move forward his day of release from this toil. But, and here Sentaro's hand holding the sake cup wavered in the air. He couldn't help feeling uncomfortable about her fingers. He saw them in his mind. No doubt, customers would balk too if they noticed them. Another idea flashed into his head. He could just get her to make the sweet bean paste. Sentaro nodded to himself. Yes, that was it. He could just stay in the kitchen and make the bean paste. While she was doing that, he might be able to get the secret of making it from her. At that age, she would probably get tired and quit soon anyway. That's right. Customers don't have to see her, he muttered aloud. The proprietor, who was talking with a patron at another table, looked over at him. He narrowed his eyes in inquiry at Sentaro. Sentaro shrugged and lifted his sake bottle in reply. Another one? He said. Chapter 4 A few days later, Sentaro looked up from the griddle to see the elderly lady in the white hat standing under the cherry tree again. She was looking at him with a smile. Hello? Sentaro spoke first. Tokue's smile widened to reveal her teeth. 
She walked towards him with a swaying, clumsy steps. The petals have all fallen now, haven't they? Yes, sure have. Sentaro looked up at the tree too. Now is a good time for leaf viewing. Leaf viewing? Yes, when the leaves are at their best. Look up! There. Sentaro looked in the direction Tokue pointed and saw buds of new foliage in the swaying treetops. See? They are waving their hands at you. When you put it like that, there was some resemblance, he thought. The overlapping leaves moving to and fro did look a bit like children holding hands and swinging them. He mumbled something in agreement and then turned to Tokue again. Um, I wanted to say... Yes? The bean paste you gave me was really delicious. Ah, uh, so you tried it? Yes, and I wonder if you would like to come and help out here. Tokue looked puzzled. What? Could you make the bean paste for me here? Tokue looked at Sentaro with her mouth hanging half open. Yes. Really? Only make the bean paste, mind you. I don't need help with customers. Oh. An awkward silence ensued as Tokue continued staring at Sentaro. He beckoned for her to come in and take a seat at the inside counter. She entered, sat down on the chair, and took off her hat. Her scalp was visible under the white hair. Can you manage lifting the cooking pans? They are quite heavy. You need to be strong to make bean paste. You could lift the pans for me. Yes, I suppose so, said Sentaro, distractedly looking at Tokue's hand. She had them collapsed in such a way as to hide the gnarled fingers. Can you hold a wooden spoon all right? Yes. Uh, excuse me for asking, but what happened to your hands? Ah, my hands. Sentaro noticed. They were tightly gripped. I had an illness when I was young, and this is a side effect. I know they don't look so good, but I don't think it will be a problem. Well, that's why I'm. That's why all I'm asking is for you to make the bean paste. That's enough. But I really can work here, can't I? Tokue looked at him and smiled. The movement caused the skin on her right cheek to stretch taut, as if was hard, as if there was a hard board concealed underneath. Sentaro wondered if that was what made her eyes appear to be different shapes. Yes, you can. What should I call you, Mrs. Miss? Tokue is fine. And what's your name, young man? Sentaro Tsuji. Sentaro Tsuji? What a lovely name. It sounded like a nectar. Ha, <sighs> I don't think so. It's just me. At Tokue's request, Sentaro wrote down the characters of for his name on a scrap of paper. And what should I call you? Sentaro will do. In that case, Sentaro, do you make the bean paste here? Ah, uh, well... Sentaro was suddenly stuck for words. He didn't know what to say. Ah, uh, to tell you the truth, it doesn't turn out. Even when I do it myself, sometimes it smells burnt. Mm, I see, said Tokue, eyeing the pots and cooker with an expression that said that she could well understood why. Sentaro stood up to serve tea, blocking her gaze at the same time. Where have you been making it for 50 years? At a confectioner's shop? I... Uh, at home? Sentaro didn't really care where she made it. He didn't care who she was either. All that concerned him was if she could make a good quality sweet bean paste to draw in customers and get him away from this shop as soon as possible. Oh, a lot of things happened. It's a long story, she said. 
It was clear to Sentaro that Tokue was not able entirely straight. Was not being entirely straight with him. But then, he didn't want to be quizzed about his own past either. Really? Well, I suppose so, he replied. Do you own this shop, Sentaro? No, it's more like the extension of a casual job. So there's someone else? The owner? My former boss used to run the shop and work here. Now his wife owns it. So you're not really responsible? Not exactly that either. Should I introduce myself to her? She's not in good health at the moment and sometimes she can't even come by once a week. Another time, maybe. Sentaro thought he detected an expression of relief pass over Tokue's face when she heard that. What about your boss? He passed away. Oh, I see. Sentaro took advantage of the pause in conversation to push a notebook and pen over to Tokue. Okay, lady, uh, Tokue, uh, can, can you write your full name and contact details for me, please? Tokue looked at the paper with strained expressions. My fingers, she said hesitatingly. Here we go again, Sentaro thought, wanting to look the other way. But after a brief interval, Tokue picked up the pen and wrote her finger, carefully forming each character stroke by stroke in the same quirky, distinctive writing handwriting that Sentaro had previously seen. It took some time for her to complete this task. The writing made a bold impression, pen with such force it left imprint several pages deep. What about a phone number for emergency contact? Do you have a mobile phone? I don't have a telephone. The post will do. Uh, that's not what I meant. It's alright, I won't be late. I'm up before the birds. Uh, but it's not... Looking at the address, Sentaro saw that she had written the name of, the, of a district that was on the outskirts of the city. He had an odd feeling that it should mean something to him but couldn't say why. One moment. Good morning, Kim Komodo. Nice to meet you. It's, it's evening there for you right now, right? Good evening then. Good evening, King Komodo. <laughs> Haven't seen you around for a bit. <sighs> this book, the chapters are all very short. I'm gonna take a short breather and stretch. Doing good, that's good to know. That's good to know. Oh my god. <sighs> Alrighty. <laughs> I think a lot of people have been playing that a lot. <laughs> oh god, I think I gotta refresh my party finder. Just one minute, please. Alrighty, guys. Upcoming payday, that's good. Looking forward to it, even though you are in a totally different world center than I am. But it's okay. <sighs> Sorry for yawning in stream. <clears throat> it's fucking 12 right now, and I'm still yawning. I need more coffee. Okay, let's continue reading. Uh, FYI, if you can't read the title of the stream, today we are reading Sweet Bean Paste by Durian Sakegawa, an amazing pseudonym. <laughs> Durian Sakegawa, and we are now at chapter 5. The second hand moved around the clock. Sentaro, with his hands on the quilt, staring up at the dark ceiling, 
The whiskey he had drunk as a nightcap had not helped him fall asleep. He twisted his head to reach out for the clock next to the pillow and brushed the alarm button with his fingers to check that it was set. Tokuya Yoshi was going to come once every two days to make coarse sweet bean paste for him starting tomorrow morning. He couldn't very well be late. That's why he had gone to bed earlier. Who was that old lady? Even though he had made it clear that she was coming only to make sweet bean paste, Sentaro still felt uneasy. Tokuya sometimes said things that seems off the mark, although her deafness could not account for it. Sorry, although her deafness could count for it, Sentaro did not think that was the reason. It was not as if she didn't have her wits about her, and although she smiled mildly enough, he had observed a determined gleam in the back of her eyes, not to mention the challenging looks she threw him at times. After Tokue had written her address, Sentaro had revealed how the shop was run. He told her about always buying wholesale bean paste and only beginning preparing preparations two hours before opening. Why? She asked loudly. If you want to use freshly made bean paste, you need to start before the sun is up. But I can just get bean paste brought here with just one phone call. What are you saying? Bean paste is the soul of Dorayaki, boss. Yeah, that's why I asked you to work here. If you were a customer, would you line up for Dorayaki from this shop? N now look here. O well, maybe not. She had given him quite a talking to. He might be the one in charge, but he could hardly answer back. In the end, he agreed to comply with her instructions. They were to begin preparing at 6 in the morning. Sentaro was to be in the kitchen before then to start boiling the azuki beans. And Tokue would catch the first bus in order to arrive soon after. He sighed at the thought. This was turning out to be a hassle. Sentaro was in his fourth year at Doraharu. He worked hard with no regular day off, but never once had he risen, risen that early to get to work. Why had he taken the old lady on, he wondered ruefully. Had he made a bad decision? This was not what he expected. She was much more demanding than first impression suggested. What have I done? He was fed up before they had even started. There was also another reason for his size. How was he going to tell the shop owner? That was going to be a problem. The owner was the wife of Sentaro's former boss, and since the death of her husband, she herself had developed all kinds of health problems. She did not care to eat Toraki anymore because of the sugar content. Whenever she came to check the books or for some other reasons, her expression was unfriendly. Though she had always been slightly neurotic, now she was fastier than ever about hygiene. Sentaro had been scolded any number of times about his cleaning methods. Once, he had taken on a student part-time without consulting her. She had been continually sarcastic about the boy, but when someone reported to her that he was smoking behind the shop, she became livid. Sentaro received a phone call from her, of course. She had immediately begun haranguing him about what ha would happen if the shop started to smell. Next time he wanted to hire somebody, she warned she would have to be present at the interview. Maybe he could keep quiet about Tokue Yoshi for, for a while. As he tossed and turned, Sentaro decided to do just that. He didn't even know yet whether she could actually work with those crippled fingers of hers. He rolled onto his back and clicked his tongue in irritation. 
Now, it was the faces of the schoolgirls who hung around his shop that he saw. They always came in a group, occupied the only five seats at the counter, made a lot of noise and left food scattered about when they left. Just the other day, they had complained about the cherry blossom petals in the dorayaki. Sentaro usually kept the window open. During cherry blossom season, petals sometimes drifted in, falling into the pancake as they cook. Sentaro had apologized when this happened and offered the girl another dorayaki, but that only set the others off. They wouldn't keep quiet about it and teasing com teasingly complain about petals in the adorayaki. Then one got out her phone and started broadcasting to all her friends that there was a free dorayaki. What would those kids say if they saw the old lady's fingers? And what would she say in turn about their outrageous behavior? It was all too much, Sentaro thought. He couldn't stop tossing and turning. Those monkeys, what were they thinking? Cherry blossom petals my foot. Sentaro batted the quilt with his hand and then reached for the alarm clock once more. Chapter 6 in the morning, Tokue Yoshi was already waiting beneath the cherry tree when Sentaro arrived, slightly late. There are some small cherries, she said in reply to Sentaro's apology, pointing to the treetop above her. Did you manage to get a bus? he asked, for he was sure there could not be any buses running at this time of the day. Oh, never mind that. She said and headed to the back door, dodging the question. In the kitchen, the bowl of azuki beans that Sentaro had left to soak overnight was waiting on the bench. The beans had swelled to fill the bowl. Every bean sparkled, transforming the atmosphere of the creek of the kitchen. Sentaro felt as if he was looking at a living creature rather than food. Mm, lovely, said Tokue, bringing her face up close to the bowl. The Azuki were not from Obihiro or Tamba or any other area known for quality beans. Average customers spent at Doraharu put those more expensive Azuki beans out of reach for Sentaro. When he explained that to Tokue, she said that she was happy to try beans from elsewhere. It was a nuisance, but Sentaro contacted a dealer and arranged for a delivery of Canadian beans to start with. Sentaro had done the calculations. He estimated that they could use 2 kilograms of raw beans per batch of bean paste. Soaking the beans overnight would be more than double their weight, bringing it to a good 4 kilograms. After boiling, they would simmer in a syrup of granulated sugar, and the amount of sugar to be added calculated at 70% of the weight after soaking. That would bring the total weight of the bean paste just to below 7 kg. Assuming 20 grams of bean paste for each dorayaki, albeit, albeit measured by eye, he estimated that they could make between 330 to 340 dorayaki with each batch. This should last for several days at current rates of consumption, since he never got through all of a 5 kilogram batch of the ready-made bean paste in one day. Before boiling, Tokue muttered, carefully examining every bean one by one. Sentaro, did you take a good look at the beans before you put them in the soup? Look at what? The beans. Sentaro shook his head. I thought so. Not all these beans are suitable. Tokue scooped out with her bent fingers. She picked out several and spread them out on her palm to show Sentaro. The skin was still hard on some while others had burst or split. You have to check. If they have already split, it can affect the quality. Beans from overseas aren't always selected carefully. Sentaro thought her handling of beans was odd. The way she brought her face up 
close to them, so close it was almost as if she was she were communicating with them. Even after they had been put into the copper pot to cook, her attitude did not change. On the occasion when Sentaro had attempted to make bean paste, he had always left the beans on the stove to cook until they were soft. Not Tokue, however, her method was completely different. To begin with, she immediately added more water as soon as the water was about to boil. She did this several times, then drained the beans in the strainer and threw away the cooking water. After that, she returned to them to the pot to soak in fresh, lukewarm water. That way, it would remove the bitterness and astringency, she said. Next, she stirred them gently with a wooden spatula, taking care not to squash them while letting them simmer through over a low heat. At every stage in this process, Tokue kept her face so close to the beans it was enveloped in steam. What was she looking at? Sentaro wondered. Was she watching for some kind of change? He moved closer to examine the Azuki through the haze of steam but couldn't see anything significant. He watched Tokue holding the wooden spoon with her gammy hands as she scrutinized the beans, observing her side on. Sentaro hoped that she wasn't going to require the same level of enthusiasm from him. Just the thought of it made his spirit sink. Without quite knowing why, however, Sentaro found himself also drawn to gazing at the beans in the pot. He watched them jiggle about, covered by the water, not a single one lost its shape. When there was just a little cooking water left in the pot, Tokue turned off the flame and placed a chopping board on top as a lid. This would steam them, she told Sentaro. All these steps were completely new to him. It's all very complicated, he blurted. It's just good hospitality. Tokue countered. For the customers? No, for the beans. The beans? Because they came all the way from Canada. For us. After a few minutes, Tokue removed the chopping board. She stared at the Azuki while pouring cold water into the copper pot. They were now at the soaking stage, she told Sentaro. This involved immersing the beans in water, letting them soak for a while, then discarding the water, pouring fresh water in. The process was repeated until the water ran clear. Tokue stared at the beans as she poured. She kept her face close, stroking them with her fingertips. It looked to Sentaro like she was panning for gold. Nobody has ever worked as hard uh, in this shop before. Good morning, Arum. <laughs> you have to do this properly. You would have to do this properly or else all the trouble you have gone to this far will be wasted. Sentaro could only stare at her. His arms folded across his chest. I was wondering, why do you look at them like that? Eh? What are you looking for when you put your face so close to the beans? I just do all I can for them. All you can? Alright, boss. Lift this pot for me, please. Sentaro changed places with Tokue and lifted it with both his hands. He poured it over the strainer in the sink and the water drained right away, revealing the cooked beans. Oh, they are beautiful. Sentaro leaned over for a closer look. This were a far cry from his own attempts. He had to admit that the skills of with which they had been cooked was obvious. Despite all the shimmering, every single bean still looked firm and taut, with no wrinkles. Whenever Sentaro had tried to make bean paste, most of the beans were usually split by this stage, and with the starch spilling out from their insides. These beans, on the other hand, simply shone each one in perfect sparkling order. I didn't know they could cook up like this. 
Sentaro gazed admiringly. Tokue shrugged her shoulders and smiled. Kuka, have you ever really made bean paste before, boss? Ah, well, I tried, but you know. Well, you'll have to do some study then. Sentaro did the rest of the work after that. The next task was to make the syrup for sweetening and for, for the sweetening the raw bean paste. He poured two liters of water into the now empty pot and brought it to a boil. To that, he added two and a half kilogram of granulated sugar and dissolved it. Tokue stood at his side, explaining the vital points. He continued to stir the syrup slowly, even after the granules of sugar had dissolved, so that it would not boil more than necessary. Next, he carefully added the prepared beans, paying close attention to the level of heat. Then, it was time to blend the beans and syrup. This is crucial, Tokue told him, because it burns easily. So make sure to keep the tip of the wooden spatula against the bottom pan as you stir. This too was new to Sentaro. He did as he was told. While Tokue added salt into the pot, he reeled off a stream of detailed instructions. If you burn it now, it's all ruined. Keep the spatula upright. Make it speedy. Don't rush. A surprising amount of sweat poured from Sentaro's brow and the back of his back uh, and the back of his neck as he stood over the hot mixture. Nevertheless, he realized that Tokue was indeed right. Whenever Sentaro had tried to make bean paste, this was the point at which he had always failed. Once blended with sugar, the bean paste ten tended to burn easily at the bottom, but if he tried to avoid this by turning the flame low, it took longer and the quality suffered proportionately. In order to make bean paste that had a pleasing texture in the mouth and still looked good to the eye, it was necessary to maintain a certain temperature to reduce the moisture. But to do this without burning, he was discovering that you had to make bowl movement with the wooden spatula at the right time. Sentaro wiped the sweat from his brow with the sleeve of his shirt while manipulating the spatula. And then, when he least expected it, That's enough now. Turn the gas off. Tokue instructed. But it's still runny. It's just right. Thank you for the follow up Kami Light. Welcome to my channel. I hope you will stay for the rest of the reading. Thank you. But it's still runny. It's just right. Timing's important here. Hang on, this substance in the copper pot was still too soft to be called bean paste. Sentaro might not be skilled at making sweet bean paste, but he knew what consistency should be for making dorayaki. If he tried to sandwich this between the pancake, it would just run out on the out, uh, run out sides. He did as Tokue instructed though, and kept stirring with the spatula after the heat. Stretch. stirring the spatula after the heat was turned off. As he did so, the runny paste gradually began to take on the right quality. Tokue spread a cloth over the chopping board. Now, we'll leave it for a while to steep in the syrup. After that, we scoop it out with the spatula and spread it on here. What? The bean paste that you just blended. Sentaro looked confused. Tokue took the spatula from him. Let's have a little rest, shall we, boss? Chapter 7 Tokue told Sentaro to write down all the steps they had just covered while the bean paste was steeping in the syrup. I can remember from watching, he answered. 
But when she challenged him to tell her from the beginning, he reluctantly pulled out a notebook. You are full of confidence, aren't you? She said. No, not really. Why don't you take notes then? It's the fine points that matter with confectionery. How can you remember anything if you don't write it down? Ugh. Abashed, Santaro made notes as Tokue explained it all over again starting with the soaking stage. Where did you learn to do this? He asked. E it's only because I've been doing it for so long. 50 years, right? You must get a lot of customers my age. Sentaro shook his head. The schoolgirls are pretty rowdy. I sometimes get fed up with their noise. A faint flush entered Tokue's cheeks. Ah, girls that age, she said. It's only natural they get excited. They could be doing worse things. I only put up with it because they are customers. I can meet them, can't I? Sentaro couldn't bring himself to say no, even though he had not changed his mind about having Tokue leave once they finished making the bean paste, specifically so she could she would not meet the customers. He was determined not to give way on that. Tokue peered into the pot and stirred the syrup soaked beans with a wooden spatula. It's just right. She scooped up some bean paste with the spatula and put it directly on the cotton cloth. I didn't know you had to do this too, Sentaro observed. They are still sweating, so you need to absorb that. By the time it cools, you have some lovely bean paste. Steam rose off the paste in the wake of the spatula moving through it. When, the spread, when spread out on the cotton cloth, the paste shone and a deep smooth aroma filled the entire kitchen. Now, we need to find out if this bean paste will go with your pancakes. Sentaro trickled butter from the Dora spoon over the hot griddle. Making the pancakes was the only thing his boss had taught him to how to do properly. The batter was a standard mixture of eggs, high quality sugar and soft cake flour combined in equal measures. Sometimes, Sentaro added a little baking soda or sweet mirin, cooking sake, or water just to adjust the viscosity. But the basic 3 equals part recipe never changed throughout the year. It was an instinctive and elegantly simple recipe that anybody, anybody could make once they got used to it. Cooking was the hard part. Unlike other similar traditional sweets made with sweet bean paste, Imagawayaki, for example, which were cooked in the mold. Dorayaki were cooked on a flat griddle, and it was the cook who determined the size and the thickness, aiming to produce a consistently uniform pancakes by finding the right rhythm and movement. Seasoned cooks always made it look easy, but it was a tricky process for beginners to master. The slightest difference in water amounts could affect the, the size. And there was no guarantee that the batter would pour onto, onto the griddle and form a perfect circle in the first place. On top of this, the batter burned easily if the cook got the timing wrong. Today, unusually, Sentaro managed to cook all the pancakes to perfection in an evenly round size. Maybe it was the thought of having quality bean paste for the first time, or perhaps it was just due to a healthy tension brought about by Tokue's presence. They had started work sometime after 6 and had now been toiling for 4 and a half hours. With 15 minutes to go until the shop opened, Sentaro and Tokue sat on the kitchen stools, stretching and rubbing their arms. They sandwiched the still warm bean paste between the fluffy, freshly grilled pancakes. For anyone who liked dorayaki, this was a moment of happy anticipation. Sentaro gave a nod of thanks in Tokue's direction and then brought the dorayaki to his lips. The aroma seemed to leap up at him as if it were alive, racing through his nose or to the back of his head. Unlike the ready-made bean paste, this was the smell of fresh living beans. It had death. It had life. A mellow, sweet taste unfurled inside Sentaro's mouth. 
Sentaro was bowed over it. He smiled at Tokue and took another bite. Same again. He was knocked out by this flavor. Hmm. He murmured, stroking his cheek. This is really something. What do you think, boss? Never taste a bean paste like it. Really? Finally, a sweet bean paste I can eat. What? Takue stared at Dorayaki. At the Dorayaki, Sentaro held in his hands. Teeth marks were visible. What did you say, boss? Her hand, still holding her own partially eaten Dorayaki, was frozen in the meat air. I... Uh... Yes? Tokue put her dorayaki down on a plate. I almost never eat a whole dorayaki. You what? Tokue's mouth hung open. How can that be? You make them. Don't tell me you don't like them. Sentaro hastily shook his head. Shook his head. No, that's not it. I do eat them. I just don't have much of a sweet tooth. Well, I never. But I can tell that your bean paste is special. I thought so before, but this... I, I never had anything like it. Sentaro, let me get this straight. You don't like sweet food? She said with her eyes glued to his face. It's not that I don't like sweet food, more that I can't eat a, can't eat a whole... Uh... My goodness, boss. The more Sentaro's voice trailed away, the louder Tokue's become. So why are you working in a dorayaki shop? Well, that's a good question. Tokue stared at him incredulously. Um, it just came about somehow that I ended up working here. Somehow? Well, there are... there were circumstances. Sentaro picked up his still unfinished dorayaki and took another bite. But this... What? You're not one to make yourself clear. I just realized that your bean paste is so good. It makes the pancake seem superfluous. It's unbalanced. Tokue took another bite of her dorayaki and put the rest in her mouth. Well, now that you mention it... I'm right, aren't I? This bean paste is so good. It's all you notice. There's no point using it with these pancakes. If anything, they are in the way. Even as he spoke, Sentaro heard a voice screaming in his head. Don't make any more work for yourself. But the words were already coming. If the pancakes were better, it would be much better overall, don't you think? Can you improve them any? Maybe, but for now, we'll have decent bean paste for the first time ever in Doraharu. Praise like that won't change anything. You disappoint me, boss. How can someone who doesn't like sweet food be running a dorayaki shop? I told you that's not what I meant. Look, I ate it all. Sentaro brushed his empty hands together, wiping off the crumbs to emphasize his point. I haven't done that in a long time. Oh, that's really too bad. Tokue shook her head in disbelief. Well, I was more interested in this. Sen Se Sentaro, lifting his hand in motion of pouring sake. Tokue wrinkled up her nose. You should be running a bar. He had no answer to this and stood up to open the shutters. Chapter 8 The sweet bean paste in Doraharu has changed. Sentaro thought about writing an announcement of some kind to put in the win in the shop window, but decided against it in the end, in case customers wondered about the bean paste he had used up to then. Nevertheless, Sentaro noticed an immediate change from the day he started making bean paste with Tokue. The usually noisy crowd of schoolgirls was strangely quiet. This tastes better somehow, one observed, looking at Sentaro. Sentaro shrugged this aside with a vague reply about good beans and didn't mention Tokue. 
Customers who bought takeaway also men commented, Have you got a new supplier? One said, When Tokue came next, Sentaro reported this to her. That's nice, she said with a smile, without a word of self-praise for her own role. But sales haven't improved. If people are going to say good things, they could at least buy more, Sentaro complained. We should simply be grateful they come at all. But you don't get being paced like this so easily. Yes, but the world isn't an easy place. Yeah, well, I guess so. Sentaro held the wooden spoon in his hand while Tokue stood by his side gazing intently at the beans in the bowl. As always, Tokue consistently turned out excellent bean paste but never had a bad day. Sentaro had a feeling that it was her posture while she worked that ensured this. She treated the azuki bean with the greatest of care, always bringing her face up close to them, painstakingly carrying out every step in the process of cooking, and moving her fingers as if there were nothing wrong with them. When Tokue said she wanted to try beans from other sources, Sentaro got the supply to deliver Chinese beans from the Shandong province and US beans as well. Both cooked up well in Tokue's hands. Each emitted a deep yet slightly different aroma and both shone in distinctly in distinctively different ways. Interesting, she pronounced. Using different beans made the cooking procedure just a little bit more complicated. Sentaro could see that it meant more work ahead, but by now, he too had become mesmerized by the whole process. He briefly considered other ideas like selling dorayaki according to the bean's place of origin since it, may, it seemed to make such a difference or making more money by branching out into other types of Japanese confectionery for which bean paste was the main or only ingredient such as azuki bean jelly or kintsuba. The bottom line, however, was that he did not want to make any more work for himself. Sentaro threw himself darkly dog into an unfamiliar work of making bean paste. It was a testing time. Physically tiring, of course, but in addition to that, Sentaro was annoyed with himself. He couldn't quite believe he was actually doing this, considering what his intention had been along, had been all along. But he had to sense that he had began to sense that if he applied himself seriously now, Azuki Beans might just open a door for him. While one part of him released the novel sensation, another part was wary. Whatever happened though, unless he bid farewell to this life constantly chained to the grill, he could not devote his days to writing again. That much was certain. Whether it was because of these conflicted feelings or because he was fundamentally not suited for this work, Sentaro was a long way off be being able to make consistently good quality beans on the day when Tokue was not there. Just as he thought he had improved, the next batch would scorch, or the beans would become sticky and gluey from over-stirring, or dried out from over-evaporation. Since he decided not to use commercial beans, bean paste anymore, Sentaro had no choice but to mix his own in with Tokue's when it looked like it's running out. Whenever Tokue tasted this mixture, he felt like a kid back at school again, waiting to receive test results. She would sit straight back and bring a spoonful of the bean paste to her mouth, and then staring into space, she would see something like, The flavor is struggling a little, and move her eyes. That didn't mean she was rejecting it, however, for she always had some comments such as, but it's interesting. Tokue was a stickler in the extreme during the process of making the bean paste, but when it comes to tasting the result, the opposite of if anything was true, she actually seemed to enjoy variation in quality. I thought I would have to start over, but this is better than the bot stuff, she commented. Surprisingly, the beans did their best. Once her work was over, 
Kakue relaxed. Her language and outlook become more upbeat. While Sentaro was grateful for this, at the same time, it sowed the seeds of trouble for him. No matter how much he told Kakue that he, she shouldn't show herself to the customers, she would stay in the kitchen for an hour or two after Doraharu opened. Sentaro weakened. And Sentaro weakened. Because, of course, she had good reasons. She was old, and her body was infirm. Over time, she became... She came to occupy the chair in the kitchen for a long while after finishing her work. I'm tired, she would say, or my back, and sit there frozen with the apron on her knees, her mouth hanging open with a blank look on her face. At times like this, she seemed too weak even to drink tea. Whenever there was an announcement outside on the public loudspeaker, she would say, What was that? Since she was hard of hearing at the best of time, and look at Sentaro for an inquiry, he could hardly say go home now, even though he wanted to, and so often she was still there when customers began arriving. This is not good, Sentaro always thought. Tokue at least made a show of trying to stay put, stay out of sight, even if she made no move to leave, but if a customer holding a baby happened to appear in front of the window, she would lean out of the window, half showing her face and cluck, oh my my my. When groups of children appeared, she would say within earshot, give them a little extra boss, go on. It was only then that Sentaro would be driven to say loudly, in spite of himself, isn't it time for you to be leaving? Upon which Tokue would open the back door and quietly disappear. The days became warmer and before long it was midsummer. One afternoon, Sentaro opened the door of the refrigerator and let out a small groan. Though the customer were not exactly forming a queue, there had been an unending stream and Sentaro gone to replenish the bean paste from the refrigerator because he was on the verge of running out, only to find that there were none left. Unless he made another batch, he couldn't serve any more customers. To run out of bean paste during daylight hours was a first. Sentaro. After apologizing to the waiting customer, he went out to find a sold out sign to hang in the window. His late boss has thought has bought the fancy looking sign which was hidden from sight among the numerous miscellaneous items on the shelf. Not once had it ever been hung out, as far as Sentaro could remember. Wondering if perhaps they had not prepared enough bean paste. He went over to the cooking notes with their detailed amounts, but it's always the same as always. Plus, the rubbish bin next to the grill was almost full to overflowing with the broken eggshells. As further testament, he hurriedly checked the takings. That day, he had sold roughly 300 dorayaki, a record for him. There was nothing for it but to close for the day. Sentaro pulled down the shutters and set off along the street now bathed in the rays of setting sun. He headed straight to the soba noodle shop and had a drink. Though tired, he felt a glow of satisfaction. He had not chosen to do, to do this work because he wanted to. He wanted to, to be free of it as soon as possible. That's all he was aiming for and yet... He felt a sense of achievement from today, as if he had turned a corner. That's what puzzled him. This feeling that he had of that he had of wanting to cheer along a sense that feeling had become somehow complicated. He didn't know where he stood anymore. What was he going to do from now on? This was a question that required urgent consideration. Sentaro pondered as he poured himself a drink. Should he be resigned to keep hanging up the soul out sign? Or should he see this as an opportunity and extend business hours into the evening? Whichever of course he decided on, Sentaro felt there was something to be said for either option. If sales kept improving, he could make more money. And that would mean he could increase his debt repayments to the owner. Yet, a part of him was still prepared to give it up. 
It was hard to imagine pushing himself any harder than he was already. He did nothing else all day except making dorayaki. Time would pass doing the exactly same thing over and over. And yet, Sentaro considered the other option. Working morning to night was bound to speed up his release from being chained to the grill. In which case, shouldn't he do his utmost to work and save money? Isn't that why the gods had sent him the old lady? He was getting top class bean for rubbish pay. If that wasn't an opportunity, what was? Is it time? He murmured. His mind spinning drunkenly, Sentaro proceeded to map out a detailed plan. As the shopping street went, Cherry Blossom Street might be down on its hill, but it did get a good flow of human traffic. Peak time was in the evening, when commuters returning home swelled the ranks of the evening shoppers. There were big confectionery shops in the city center that did all the preparations in the daytime and opened them evening until late at night. Why shouldn't he do the same? A surprising number of office workers and businessmen and women crave something sweet after an, after an evening out drinking with their colleagues. Clearly, it was not smart to shut up the shop while it's still light. But if he was going to get new customers, he had to stay open until evening rush was over. Which meant keeping the shop open until at least 8 or 9 at night. What would make all the extra bean paste that require? This was the wall Sentaro ran up against. He didn't think it was possible for a 76 year old woman who sat down at the drop of a hat to work any harder than she already was. Chapter 9 Could they increase their sweet bean production? A few days later, Sentaro sounded out Tokue. He gave no sign of surprise. Her response was to simply stare at him in silence for a while and say, Good for you. Her eyes creased in a smile. I've got more customers than ever, thanks to you. Are you going to make more bean paste? Yes, soon. In that case, I would better help you. Tokue gave no signs of displeasure about an increased workload. After discussing if they decided to increase production to 10 kilogram batches each time, we'll be even busier, Sentaro warned. What of it? It's a good thing. How's your health? Will you be able to cope? You do the all you do all the heavy work, won't you, boss? Yeah sure. If that's the case, why don't we start today? Tokue rock on her heels like a young mother holding a baby on her hip. For the first time ever, Sentaro understood what it true what it was to be truly under pressure at work. On busy days, there was no time to even stretch as he stood in front of the griddle all day, pouring batter onto the grill to cook the pancakes. In between, he would see to customers work to till and fill the pancakes with sweet bean paste. As always, he did not take any regular days off, nor did he increase the days Tokue worked. Sentaro kept working, glued to the grill from early morning until night, and so the days went by. Daily takings were consistently good, even with the usual up and downs. But before long, the misty, drizzly days of the early summer rainy season arrived. Tiny droplets of moisture gathered on the gleaming, deep green leaves of the cherry, tea, cherry trees. While this may have been good news for the trees, it was not welcome for, to a confectioner. For Sentaro, who made fresh dorayaki without using preservatives, it signaled the arrival of a trying period. The coarse sweet bean paste used for dorayaki was susceptible to the heat and humidity and could spoil in a little as half a day in the worst condition. Other types of other types with a higher sugar concentration, such as used in Monaka, would keep better. 
Sentaro had to be extra careful with the pancakes as well. If he made too many at once, too much time went by before they were consumed, they become sticky and unusable. The only way to avoid this was to try and anticipate the number of customers and cook up small batches at a time. Everything was much more effort during the rainy season. Nevertheless, Dora Haru was still on a roll, thanks to Tokue's bean paste. Customers continued to queue outside the window even while holding an umbrella with one hand. During the same period, in previous years, there were so few customers, the shop might as well have been closed. This year, however, the days went by in a busy blur for Sentaro. It was around this time that Sentaro began to get dizzy spells as he stood in front of the griddle. In addition to being rushed off his feet all the time, the oppressive summer heat was beginning to take its toll. The heavy, humid air peculiar to this time of year wormed its way into the shop through the window that, has, that was always open for customers. The air conditioner was running constantly, but since Sentaro was always standing next to the heat, off the gas lit griddle, dark patches of sweat stained his apron and clothes. He began to drink large volume of water while cooking. His appetite naturally decreased and he stopped eating even so much a sandwich from the convenience store. Still, he continued to work without rest as if possessed. Nor did the uncomfortable re rainy season deter the customers. Finally, there came a day when even the increased production was insufficient and Sentaro had to hang the soul out sign once more. He had never felt more tired and worn out in his life. Once, back in his flat, he collapsed in the kitchen floor and remained prone without moving for a long while. Only after downing copious amounts of whiskey did he stretch out on his futon to sleep. The next morning, he saw... The next morning saw him sitting slumped on a chair in the kitchen of Doraharu. A batch of bean paste that he had made himself was in the copper pot, steeping in the syrup, nearly ready. All he had to do was divide it up and mix a portion in with Tokue's bean paste to make it go further. But Sentaro could not move. Though he knew what he had to do next, his body would not respond. He just sat there, frozen in the cool blast of air streaming from the air conditioner. It was too much effort even to move his fingers. That day, Sentaro did not open for business. At some point, he fell asleep sitting up and when he opened his eyes again in the hands of the clock showed it was close to midday, he managed to lift himself from his seat finally but no matter how he tried, he could not bring himself to open the shutters. His breathing came in shallow gaps as he, ga as he wrapped up the bean paste. Before he could put it in the refrigerator, he slumped into his chair again, once again. Finally, gathering up the energy to move, Sentaro changed out of his work clothes and left the shop. Though it had been an overcast in the morning when he arrived, a strong glare now reflected off the road surface. Flinching from the strong sunshine, Sentaro sought the shade of a cherry tree. A cicada chirruped and flew off. As he stood with both hands pressed against the rough bark of the tree, it was all he could do to remain upright. An uncomfortable sweat streamed from every pore of his body, surrendering his weight against the trunk. He gazed up at the deep green treetop and focused on keeping his eyes fixed on the leaves swaying in the wind. A flickering image of his mother's face floated out. Floated out from the shadows of the leaves. She had visited him when he was in prison, but had always remained silent. Her face, through the clear acrylic barrier, looking more aged than it with each visit. All of a sudden, Sentaro felt like weeping. 
with tears threatening to spill over, he headed for the road along the train line to avoid the shopping street where people might see him. Upon reaching the road, he stopped and watched several trains go by. There seemed no way forward or back. After a while, he became scared of his thoughts in that place and set off walking towards a residential area. Bright sunshine poured down from a clear sky. In Santaro's mind, the clarity of the day only highlighted his state of wretchedness. All the time he had ever squandered in his life seemed to be clinging to his footsteps, dragging him down. He felt as if he were a scrap of rubbish drifting through one backstreet alley after another. Die! He thought he heard a voice whisper. By the time he returned to his flat, he had wandered so long and so far he had no memory of where exactly he had been. He flopped down on the futon still laid out on the floor. His chest gave off a dull heat as if the blood was pooling there. Die. Wouldn't it be better to die? Sentaro felt himself sink and be drawn in by that voice. He was drowning and his breath was shallow. He fell into a feverish dream, gasping and drenched in sweat. He struggled in an unfamiliar place. Chapter 10 The phone was ringing. Sentaro lifted his head and saw light behind the curtain. The clock showed that it was 8 in the morning. Sentaro couldn't work out why the telephone was hounding him and why the room was bright to begin with. The ringing persisted. He crawled over to the kitchen to pick up the receiver. Boss, what's wrong? Tokue was on the other side. Sentaro mumbled something vaguely and she asked again, What's wrong? Well, are you alright? He saw a flashback of railway track and felt cherry trees bark under his palms. Well, I... His hazy mind be started to run. He had given Tokue his copy of shop keys in case of emergency. She must have opened up by herself and started work. Did you oversleep? Or don't you feel well? Sorry. He meant to say he would be there soon. But the words stuck in his throat. I'm a bit under the weather, he came out with. What's wrong? I think I'm probably just tired. Will you be alright? I might have a rest day today. Tokue paused. Well, it's no wonder. You have been working non-stop, she said. That's a good idea. I'm sorry. I I'm already started cooking the bean paste, so I'll leave when it's done. Sorry, will you be okay on your own? I'll be fine. You worry about yourself. Why don't you take two or three days? I'll be in tomorrow. He cut Tokue short. If he stayed away for that long, Sentaro felt he was likely to never go back. When you have finished today's batch, please go home. Yes, alright, I'll do that. But... Tokue hesitated. I'm sorry, just do as I p ask, please. Sentaro ordered and hung up before she could reply. The next morning, Sentaro set out for Toraharu earlier than usual. When he arrived, however, he found the shutters already half open and sweet aroma in the air. Tokue? Oh, boss. Tokue, what are you doing here so early? I thought I'd make the bean paste instead of you. You what? Sentaro could not absorb this. Tokue was here, starting work by herself on a day when she was not scheduled to come in. Thank you, he said with a nod. How are you today? Tokue looked up from the beans. She was watching over as they boiled away in the pot, flash a smile at, and flash a smile at Sentaro. I think I'm okay now. 
It's not right you don't take any time off, she said. Yes, well, I'll think about it. Sentaro threaded his arm through the sleeves of his chef coat as he spoke. But when it came to doing the buttons, his finger suddenly stopped. Yesterday on the phone, Tokue has said that she was starting to make bean paste, which meant that there should be enough for today. So why was she here again today this morning to make more? Tokue, didn't you make bean paste yesterday? Where is it? Ah, uh, yes. Yesterday. Uh... She lifted her eyes from the pot but did not immediately look at Sentaro. Then she shrugged and turned to face him. Well now, you see, I didn't know what to do. I made the bean paste and was just sitting down for a little rest when a customer arrived. Huh? Y yes, a customer arrived and I... I had to open the shop. Huh? What? Sentaro head jerked towards forward in shock. You opened the shop? But uh, how did you open the shutters? You know, I never like the shutters all closed up. So I just opened the bottom parts. Like you see now, that's when a customer called out to me. But you promised that you would go home after finishing the bean paste. Sentaro felt the sweat forming in his armpits. What about the pancakes? Oh, I cooked those too. You did? You were able to cook them? Oh, I managed somehow. I'm sorry, boss. It's a bit late for sorry. Tokue put the wooden spatula down and pointed at the countertop. I didn't know how you do your book, so I just wrote how much I saw in there. Who asked you to? It was a simple table. Figures for the day's taking and profit was recorded in a distinctive curling handwriting Sentaro knew. The right the numbers were impressive. Did you do all this by yourself? It was very busy. Customers didn't stop coming. And you really did all this alone? Yes, by myself. Oh, but the first customer helped with the shutters and I asked the last customer to help me close them. Sentaro felt like sitting down in a shock. How had she managed it? What was her pancake batter taste like? She had handled all the money with those gnarled fingers. What had customers thought of that? I'm sorry, Takue repeated. Ah, I'm just surprised that's all. You could have said something. But you would have said no, wouldn't you? Clearly she had broken the rule. But Sentaro recognized he was in no position to reprimand her for it. Tokue shifted her grip on the wooden spatula and stood there stiffly like a child who has been scolded. But I can't imagine you... You must have been so exhausted after selling all that. Yes, I was very tired. And then you came in early today. Yes, I was here early. Unsure of what attitude he should adopt, Sentaro instead slapped his own cheek. Tokue flinched, but Sentaro paid no heed and picked up the measuring cup. Boss? That's enough. How many kilograms of azuki are we cooking today? Let me see. Two kilograms of dried beans. Sentaro did the sums in his head and poured the sugar for the syrup onto the scale. Boss? Yeah? Why did you do that? Were you trying to get yourself moving? No, that's not it. Sentaro didn't understand himself why he had slapped his own cheek. Tokue was in high spirits all day. She chatted away while stirring the beans with the wooden spatula. Boss, where are you from? Takasaki. Have you been in Tokyo ever since you left? Well... I've moved, I've moved around a bit. Really? Lucky you. Tokue sighed in envy. It's not that great. I just sort of bounce around. Is that so? Whereabouts? Oh, just the Kanto region. Well, that's not so bad, is it? I... Uh, I lived in Aichi Prefecture when I was a child. Aichi? Yes. The real countryside. 
on the Ida line out of Toyohashi. Tokue lifted her eyes away from the bean, something she would ordinarily, ordinarily never do, and looked at Sentaro. The cherry blossoms there were so beautiful. Oh? Where did you say it again? Uh, mm, she hesitated. There was a cliff with the river at the bottom, and the slope from the cliff to the river was covered with cherry trees. I've never seen any as beautiful as those. For some reason, Tokue did not name the place. Did you go back there sometimes? Tokue shook her head. No, I've never been back there for decades. She turned her head. She turned her eyes back to the beans in the pot. What kind of food do you like, boss? What's the local specialty in Takasaki? Ah, uh, let me see. Daruma bento is all I can think of. You know, the box lunch where you can buy at the train station. Sentaro smiled as he filled the stock pot with water for the syrup. Tokue sounded like a child. He was grateful just to pass time answering her under undemanding questions. Daruma lunch boxes comes in white or red, he said. I wonder if it's because there was something different inside. I like the sound of sta station lunch boxes eating while you travel. What do you like to eat, Tokue? Food simmered in miso specialty in Aichi, isn't it? Or those flat kishimen noodles? We didn't have anything so nice when I was growing up. She said, flapping her hands as if to wave away the very idea. When I say countryside, I mean real country. We used to pickle cherry blossom petals and put them in hot water to drink. Wow, sounds like a foreign country. Japan then and Japan now are very different countries. Sentaro nodded and put the stock pot on the gas. Anything and everything changes, doesn't it? Like what? Tokue looks Sentaro up and down. Like me. What? Well, I'm in debt to the owner of this shop. The wife of my late boss. Oh. Thank you, Ando. <laughs> Let me take a sip of water. Well, I'm in debt to the owner of this shop, the wife of my late boss. Oh my, I don't know what to say. <sighs> there was a time when I uh, went off the rails a bit. You owe money? Are you sure you are not being cheated? It's okay. The boss took care of my debts. That's why I'm here. I'm still repaying the money to his wife. Sentaro glanced at Tokue. Oh, keep your eyes on the pot. She hastily turned back to stare into the copper bean pot again. But uh, how did you get into the debt? Sentaro looked into the stock pot and saw tiny bubbles dancing on the bottom. I'm embarrassed to say, but I didn't always keep the straight and narrow. I just bumbled along, not knowing what to do with my life, really. Whatever I did never worked out. At one time, I wanted to be a writer, but I never write a word these days. I never became an expert in dorayaki either. I'm just a waster. But you work hard now. You never take time off. Haha. <laughs> Tokue turned off the flame under the pot of beans, and but made no move to start rinsing. She stared at the boiled beans. Let's make a goal. Let's make a goal of it together, you and me, she said, turning to look at Sentaro. 
in the eye. I'll help you. The stock pot in front of Sentaro started to boil. It's okay, you do enough already. With you around, I feel like I have an ally. Fate can be a tough deal. Sentaro went to pick up the cup of sugar. Fate? Tokue's voice was charged. What do you mean? Don't throw around words like fate, Sentaro. Huh? Young people shouldn't talk about fate. Chastised, Sentaro looked at the floor. I... That was a period when I couldn't leave the same place for a long time. Tokue said. Wait. Hang on. Okay, I'll do the voice. I... There was a period when I couldn't leave the same place for a long time. Tokue said, and quickly shook her head, as if words that I slip out were somehow distasteful. She began to fill the copper bean pot with water. I'm sorry, I appreciate your concern. I'm sorry too, she said, not meeting Sentaro's eye. Please forget about it. That's the end of chapter 10. And I think we should end the day now. I mean, end the reading now, not the day. The day is too early. We are a quarter into the book and there's already 10 chapters in. The chapters are very short and sweet. Like Azuki bean paste. <laughs> 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 you know what's funny? I mean, it's not it's not that funny, but yesterday I went to a local, a nearby bakery, and I bought dorayaki. I actually didn't know this book is about dorayaki until I uh, flip over the first chapter. Like the first page of the first chapter is already talking about Torayaki. But I didn't look at the book until like I went to the bakery in the morning and I bought Torayaki. But I didn't buy red bean paste one. Maybe next time I will. I bought the chocolate one which tastes fucking good, bruh. Um, but yeah, I think I'll probably try the red bean. I'm not really a super big fan of red bean, red bean paste. Actually, <gasps> sorry for yawning, but yes, um, yeah, we we shall stop at uh, chapter 10 today and we'll continue chapter 11 on Wednesday. Um, how do you all find the story so far? Oh, by the way, if you guys do not know, um, I do have a Discord channel now, so feel free to join my Discord channel, if you want to, no pressure, um, but yeah, thank you Okami Light for the follow. Uh, I hope you're still here. Thank you for being here. If this is your first time, I do book reading on every alternate days. Uh, I used to do it three times a week, but I have lessened it to twice a week because I wanted to stream other stuff, but I never did because I have anxiety. <laughs> but Arum and Bob, hey, thank you for being here with me today. I'm all dressed up as a shop owner with my assistant, Tokue-san. This is Tokue-san, and this is me, Sentaro. Are you guys still there? Have you all fell asleep? I kind of like the book actually, so far. I think it's so far so good. It's um, I like. <laughs> so cute. 
<laughs> yes, this is how I imagine uh, Tokue san look like. Yeah, I saw you. You were you were here, but you went off, right? You had something to do, right? That's alright. It's fine. You, I'm not holding you guys hostage here, even though the window there looks like fucking prison window. Don't worry about it. Arum is here. Arum and Arum and Bob is here. <laughs> Bob the duck. Arum, do you have anywhere you are going to perform today? I'll go there and AFK. Ah, already performing for me. Nice. <laughs> so, how do you all find the story? I mean, there is like um, a book club. In my Discord channel, where you can discuss the book if you guys want, uh, or you can discuss books that you guys read too, not just about the books I read. I'm not that selfish or self centered. Um, I won't harangue you if you talk about Murakami's books. <laughs> <laughs> so easy to spot there are so many people in this game that's so easy to spot arum for one uh exia for one uh wine addict for one uh tazamina pink for one beat for one it's so easy to spot them when they come in i don't even have to like, open my ui to see who is it Is there anything you guys want to talk about? Open forum. Today is. Just... Oh, serious? I should go there. Arum is in my world, right? No, it's a wanderer. Shit. Ah, Arum. The title is just confessions. <laughs> It's just confessions. That's all. Confessions 2010. You're in Typhon. Okay, I'll go there. Are you performing there or anything? I'll go there later. I'll go to Typhon later. But you see, the thing is, right? I have. I told you before. I have very clingy retainers. I show you. See, Alfred, looking good. I'll check on them every hour. And Isadora. Oh! <gasps> can sell this or use it. I think I'm gonna use it. Damn! Isadora went to steal some person's curtain, man. That's awesome. You won't be open today. Too busy open the to open the canteen. Canteen? What canteen? I'll go there. I'm just fucking around, bruh. Like, I don't. I don't even play the game. I just sit here and AFK. You see, I have like. I have like fucking. Um. What do you. What do you even call this? Things to do? <laughs> I have all these like. Uh, side quests that I want to do to like. Uh, start the beast trap and everything, and I'm still like. I, it's a. Food canty. Food canteen. Food canteen. Is it like your. I can't. I have to go to Typhon. Thank you for coming over here just to attend the event. That's. You don't have to. You can just be in the Twitch to listen. But I really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you so much. Food canteen on your adventure plate. You look so different on your adventure plate. Uh, goblet. Okay, I have to take a screenshot of this. Hang on. <laughs> Table setter. 
That's amazing. I don't know how do you even fucking get that title, but hey. But yeah, uh, I'll link it in my Discord, and then y y you guys can go visit. Visit Arum's canteen. I mean, my Discord has like what? Five, like three people or something. <laughs> Yeah, but I will go there. I try to go there. I'm just, I'm just so used. Like I'm so used to the sound in my room, like a like it's as a background sound that I just don't go anywhere and sit here and then I can press on my retainer. It's terrible. <laughs> I should attempt to play the game. Yes. <laughs> oh my god. That's a great outfit. That's the best outfit, Arum. Truly is the best fashionable person. Oh my god. I, I know Ando... Ando, you resetted your venue, right? Oh my god, why is it 10 viewers? Hi, viewers. Um, uh, lurkers and all. I am Ariana Nuna. Both in game and out of game, I am Ariana Nuna. <laughs> of course, I'm too lazy. <laughs> And it's easier. Yes, you are a fashionista. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why, are <you laughs> Why are you patting the bell for? Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Ando, is your event... Uh, place ready sorry i'm not like i i've been out of like i've been offline for like a week or something <laughs> been so busy i think it should be more free this week <sighs> hopefully open forum or ask me anything time what's my timer I'll do a AMA every time. I'll do an AMA every time I finish reading. Five minutes AMA time. Mm. That's now. You can ask me anything. You can ask me for advice. You can ask me about yourself. I mean, I don't know. You can What's 300 plus 2,708? <coughs> Sorry, my... My breakfast just burped out. Hang on. Um, let me get my calculator. I'm sorry, my math is terrible. So 300 plus uh, 2785 is uh, 3085. That's so easy. Why can't I do it myself? <laughs> I fail at math. I used to fail at math. And then my teacher was like, I'm so disappointed. And then I look at, and then she, she's the kind of like fake ass teacher who's like always smiling. So I just look at her and I felt so vindictive. Like, why are you looking down at me? Huh? 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 So I was like, you know what? I'm going to sleep in your class and then go home and study math on my own. And the next exam came in, I got A. And she looked at me like, I'm so proud of you. And I'm like, bitch, you didn't teach me shit. I studied this myself. I could understand math by studying myself than fucking studying from you. You taught me nothing, bitch. Mrs. Lau, fuck you. Okay, anyway. that's the, uh, Why did I start Notable? Because I'm bored. And I was very depressed. And I wanted to die. I mean, I still want to die, but less want to die. But uh, the general idea is that I really like reading to people. Uh, okay, general idea is I like reading. And I have a habit of reading out loud because I wanted to improve my English uh, pronunciation. 
uh, I used to record myself on a tape, a tape recorder. I'm dating myself. A tape recorder, and then I'll listen and try to fix my own pronunciation. Uh, and it became a habit whenever I read a novel or read anything, I'll just read it out loud. And then, um, one day I just wanted to be a background noise for my friends on a Discord channel. Um, uh, while they work. So while they work, I read. Uh, but things happen. I left that Discord channel and had, I had no other outlet and I miss reading, um, to people or even nobody so Dian, my manager <laughs> I always call her my manager but Dian is not here now but Dian uh, suggested that maybe I could do um, Nudible on stream so I made an avatar I made an avatar I made I uh, made a I turned my Twitch account from uh, just recording uh, rates progress into a personality channel, I would say. Yeah, uh, Dian is not available until 6.2. Uh, Dian is taking a rest from the game. Uh, she's, she's focusing on IRL stuff. You're looking for a water dish for Doc and Kiwami. Ah, uh, water dish. Where was it? <sighs> Uh, what the dish? You gotta check at uh, Don Quixote and see. Maybe it's in Don Quixote. Um, I thought about it. Uh, I thought about like being in like a like maybe with the Discord channel that I made. I can back. I can like go on to stream. And talk to you guys while I uh, play through it. I don't know, like because I like in the Discord channel there's a voice channel, right? Like maybe for those who are comfortable, like Bit, uh, who are comfortable with having their voice on my channel. Um, the Zelant. Um, I will not play Fastmo. Uh, because. Reasons uh, that I'm not. It makes me sad. <laughs> it's not, it doesn't make me scared. It makes me sad because I used to play fast more with a very close group of friends that I'm not friends with anymore. Um. Oh, oh, five minutes gone. Wow. Uh, but anyway, you guys can still continue talking and asking me questions because there's like 10 of you guys here. Uh, just. I'm free, like, I'm not hungry yet, so I, you can, yeah. Um, generally, well, the games that I'm going to stream and play is Yakuza 6, which is not multiplayer, and then the other one is Stray. Uh, I'm gonna stream Stray. I was supposed to stream Stray last weekend, but, uh, I didn't feel so good mentally. Uh, over the weekend, so I did not stream on. Uh, uh, I didn't stream stray. Well, I will stream stray maybe on Friday, I think. Yeah. I can't promise. I have. There's something about like. Like doing nudible is fine because I'm just reading, but like when I'm like. I think I'm too caught up like with like. Um, Thinking that I'm not entertaining enough for people to watch while I'm playing a game. Like, I will make, like, Yakuza 6 is so easy to entertain people because I generally, even when I'm not streaming, when I play the game, I talk shit about the game. Like, I mean, not not about the game, but talk shit in the, like, you know, in regards to the situations in the game a lot to myself. That's like kind of a jokey way. So... Uh, but like I'm very scared that I when I play and when I stream stray like I don't know like I don't know I just have like slight anxiety about like streaming uh, other stuff than nudible because nudible feels like an event where you guys attend and listen to uh, but other games like I feel like I have to like entertain 
and the feeling like I have to entertain just makes me a little bit like uh, cold feet, I guess. Um, yeah. But yeah, if got if you guys have like like if you guys wanted to play like multiplayer games or anything like that, just let me know. Uh, join my Discord. You can you guys can chat there and like talk about other stuff, IRL stuff, or like share food pics or whatever. Food pic, not feed pics. Food. Food pics, not food pics. Okay, food pics. Okay, gourmet pics. Gourmand pics. Okay. Um, or pet pics. If you guys want, there's a channel for almost everything. Thanks to Twisty, who is my mega mod in uh, my channel, and also my simp. Um, yeah, feel free to say it like chat or say anything. Uh, you guys can still ask me questions. Arum food, <laughs> food pigs. <laughs> you can share arum pigs, but don't share uh, food pigs. Just arum food, arum pigs is fine. Yeah, feed feed pigs, it's okay, but not feet pigs. Yes, 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 yes. Speaking of which, Ando, you are from Singapore, right? Uh, Ando and Zelon can like hang out together. I'm coming to Singapore next month, guys. Do you guys want to meet up? I can't guarantee that I'm the same person in per in real life. I can guarantee. <laughs> I might not be so talkative, but it's hard to tell. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming over for like 10 days. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, can, we can plan something out, for sure, for sure. But don't, but don't, never, never share my IRL pics with anyone, not on Twitter, not on anywhere, okay? No, no IRL pics, okay? No, not allowed. Un unallowed. Disallowed. No IRL pics. You can meet me in my no, but no pics. Fuck that shit. I hate the I hate getting pictures taken. <laughs> Under ooh. <laughs> Ando, uh, Ando, do you skate? Do you cr do you longboard? <laughs> Anyone wants to join me longboarding? Take longboarding lessons? I found a longboarding lesson somewhere on the internet. Uh, I created... Yeah, if you go back... If you go to my channel... Under the video tab... Okay, go to my channel... And then you go to videos... Uh, you will be able to see a video of me creating my avatar. Uh, but I use Vroid. I don't use Rig. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. My sister's trying to get us take family photo and I'm like, mm, can I not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah I understand that I don't really want like but I know that like there are like old people who say that oh you regret it if you don't take a lot of pictures when you're young like because you won't have photos from that period of time and all that but <sighs> but some I mean as some like as I, I, I like I do agree to an extent because like I don't like to take pictures when I was in my 20s and now that I'm in my 30s and then I'm like 
I want to find pictures of me in my 20s and all those pictures are like you know selfies and also like mirror pics and it feels so incomplete you know like it's it's like on I don't know like it's yeah I don't know how to explain it I think taking getting pictures taken is fine just I don't know I'm very conflicted regarding this because I, I feel like I regretted not taking more pictures when I was younger definitely and I'm actually very happy that my mom took so many baby pictures of me because I know a lot of people didn't get didn't don't have that like some parents don't really take pictures of their kids or some parents don't really um uh or some people just lost like all their childhood pics but I'm very glad that I have all of those inside like in the album and all that yeah but yeah this is just an, a V-Roid avatar it's not a rig that's why I can't move my arms so I wish I can move my arms so I can like wave goodbye and stuff but it's not a rig maybe one day I'll get a rig but uh, not now, cause I'm poor as fuck. I mean, I'm not poor as fuck. I'm still alive. Um, I still have food to eat, roof o over my head, but um, financially not there yet to actually spend money on the channel that given me nothing in return. <laughs> channel is growing for sure, but. Uh, stagnated like it went like on an uphill um, in like two months I got like a hundred subscribers which is insane uh, but it stagnated for like two months now I think almost two months now so yeah I think I think it's really difficult Un unless I don't know unless you do something special really because like like everyone wants to be a streamer now and my <laughs> intention is not even to be a streamer really like if I can make money out of this fine but you know like that was not my intention to begin with I don't think I'm that entertaining as a person just make a <laughs> just fucking make a v right man and uh I'm self-conscious too how I look in real life. I look like shit, basically. Uh, just make a V-Roid! <laughs> no, I, I, I don't have confidence to show my face in stream as well. It's just, that will never happen. <laughs> I will get so many people tell me go to die, probably, because I'm so ugly. <laughs> yeah I'm not I'm not typical like even my voice is like I'm not your typical um how do you say I'm not your typical like I don't know I don't like I don't even like to call myself a VTuber I just call myself a streamer Cause it's like, like I feel like VTuber is like another thing that I'm not connected, I don't feel connected to. I feel like VTuber is like for like those cutesy people. I'm not cutesy and I cuss a lot. I know they are like uh, VTubers who are like, you know, like ra have rough voices and like cuss a lot too. I know that, okay? But I'm um... But um, uh, yo, you are uh, thinking of how to collab over Twitch? Collab over Twitch is just easy. You just fucking use Discord voice call. Well, once upon a time when my good friend uh, Strudo Explodo were a streamer, he's been too busy IRL now to be a streamer. But uh, once upon a time when before I started to have my own voice on my own channel and have an avatar. Uh, I used to be a featuring voice in uh, Strudel's stream 
So he will stream and play game, and I'll be like sitting there just talking or like commenting on stuff while he play the game. Uh, one of our plans is that he plays Final Fantasy VIII because Final Fantasy, uh, while I'm there, like making comments or like telling him what to do or you know stuff like that, being being a mother basically. Uh, but I'm still waiting for that day to come. <laughs> But yeah, that's a that's a way to collab, I would say. Um, yeah, and though I think you you yeah just stream. You that I mean, don't stream because you think that it's going to make you money, because it's not going to make you money at all. Seriously, seriously, it doesn't make you money. No, it doesn't. Uh, people like to say that oh, girls have it easy. Girls, girl streamers have it easy. They all they have so many subs and so many followers. You know what I get? I get followers. Yeah, sure. I get a lot of followers, but I don't really get a lot of subs. So yeah, v yeah. See, I don't, I don't agree with me. VTubers all have the high pitch voice, and here I am. Like, I can do the high pitch voice too. Like, let me. <coughs> let me try. Hey guys. Oh my god, I'm on the vomit. How are you doing today? Oh my god, I'm so excited! <laughs> yeah, that type of voice, I think. I can't. I, I, I'm too old for that fucking bullshit. Yeah. I can't do that, man. I can't do that. Not for, not for anything. Not for anything. Not for a million subscribers. I won't fucking do that. Yeah. Yeah, I I can't. That's too much energy. I am a low energy person, and I, and I talk about death every single time I stream. I'm like a. <sighs> I'm like a goth, or an emo VTuber. I guess is there anything like that? That voice, Arum. Arum's having a stroke right now. <laughs> Imagine one morning you come in and I'm like Hey! Are you guys ready for this book today? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited! Imagine that guys, imagine. Just fucking imagine that. Today we're gonna be, we're gonna be reading Sweet Bean Paste by Durian Sakigawa and Durian is my favorite fruit. Yeah, fucking imagine that, guys. I will fucking die within like the next five minutes trying to like contain that voice within me. I don't do that shit. Bruh. VTubers seems like, right? Like the cute fucking voice that they can jerk off to, you know? Because they imagine, like they watch too much Japanese porn and then they think that any girls with that voice is associated with Japanese porn actresses. I'm going to a territory that I should not go to, but here I am. Arum is a regular at your venue. Ha! Arum is a cutie. A super cutie. Yeah, duh! Yeah, there you go. You guys don't know my history at all. You guys are so new to my channel. 
You guys are so fucking new to my channel. Oh my god. Let, okay, let me... Okay. Because I switch off all my points redemption. When I'm reading. Uh... I used, I used to have, I mean, I have many, 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 um, okay, refresh the channel right now and look at the points redemption, yep, yeah, you guys have no idea what my history was. I, you know when I, when I, when I used to raid a lot, like my main content is raiding. Uh, last time, <laughs> and uh, that was like when I'm raiding w in like a uh, Discord channel with my friends and all that. They they would like just tell me to stop, like they will basically have a counter. Omoshiroi! That's a pretty good one. Thanks, Twisty. <laughs> but yes, when I raid, I have I I tend to make noises. Uh, I think Bit 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 has listened to me raiding before, right? Bit can be the judge. I, I make a lot of... Ah! <laughs> yeah. You'll never get me. Yeah. <laughs> you guys don't know my history, huh? <laughs> Nuna is known for moaning. It's a good thing or a bad thing that I'm bringing this up right now. <laughs> what Why a pussy. is Ian always dying? Oh my god, they just pop out at the same time. I know it's not intentional, and it's not intentional. Okay, bit. It's not intentional. It's so big. <laughs> <laughs> and you. Yeah. He knows what I like. <laughs> uh, I like the it's so big one because you can hear Strudo like just <laughs> into his microphone. <laughs> oh, I miss Strudo so much. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, that one's from Petrius. Cause I'm like keep yelling like big ball, big ball, big ball. You guys know what that meant, right? Well, <laughs> I can't put that long of a claim thing, a redemption thing. Uh, the voice, so I have to cut out the yelling for big ball. <laughs> yeah, Bit was there the, during that sound bite. But he won't let me come! <laughs> dangerous. 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 <laughs> you guys are wasting your points like crazy. <laughs> Finally made it to the chat. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Keep talking, guys.
Okay, I'll, I'll claim one. I'll claim one. I claim the super one for you guys, the 1000 points one for you guys, so that you guys don't have to spend your points, okay? So that you can listen to them. This is my super rage. Oh, voice call and you'll hear all these stupid noises that I make that I do not intend to be sexual but it got sexualized by everyone okay guys seriously wait what Zelon Zelon missed that one Zelon do you want to hear it again I can redeem it again just tell me Man, raiding is hard, dude. But I love raiding. But I'm I've stalled at P3S and I'm just too lazy to go proc with fucking party finder. And I don't have a static and I don't really wanna commit to a static. You will laugh? You will <clears throat> You will laugh like in real life or you will laugh like what? Okay. Then you shall save a thousand points just to hear that again. Banuna points, okay? But yeah, these are all my sound bites that I hide whenever I uh I'm reading because I can't have you guys fucking spamming danger song like when I'm when I'm reading so <laughs> I know Ando really likes danger song <laughs> in real life uh Yes, and the uh, you will you will I know for a fact that when I'm reading you will hundred percent spam the oh my god moan like ten times in a row. You probably have the most viewing time out of everyone here. Cause you lurk like hell. You watch all my stupid fucking other stream as well. But yeah, but I leave those uh redemption on for other streams. Just not. <laughs> you do at the end, like right now. Hell yeah. All right. Five minutes, and I'm going to stop my stream after that. Five more minutes, guys. Redeem anything you guys want to redeem, or you guys can ask me a many more questions after this. I will stop my stream Cause it's close to 2 o'clock and then I can go and get some lunch
that, um, that just means that you could you, you just need to watch all my streams man I'll see you beat Ah, King Komodo Any tip to set up streaming for someone without ta I don't have talent Ando Ando I I don't have talent DN help me with all the emotes stuff Don't use PNG don't bother with PNG tubers just you you know what you, you look at look at my emotes all of them are my avatar so what you do is you create your avatar with vroid on steam and on on steam all right create one however one how you want to look like all right no dn helped me the most i have no talent all right Okay, so and then using using a uh, thing called VC VC face program, you can have expressions through that. Like right now, I can change my expression to like smiling, and that can change it to wait. Hang on, I can change it to like wait. Mm, fuck, I can change it to like smiling. I can change it to. Uh, okay, this is the this is the red red face. Yeah, I can change it to angry. I can change it to smiley. I can change it to like. <laughs> Yada. <laughs> La, yeah, this is the you know, VTuber face, and then this is a sad face, and then this is the. <gasps> I'm so shocked by the size of that. Oh no, never mind. So, uh, yeah. So you can have like expressions like this. So when you're doing this expression on your VC uh, program, you just take a screenshot, a high res screenshot, and then after that, just turn it into a fucking e e e emoji, emoticon. You don't need anything. You don't need people to. It's so big. <laughs> Who is Reshni? 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 Reshni's? <laughs> I've never seen this name before. Welcome to my stream. I'm so sorry. Saw that I don't know why there's no I didn't see the notification. Ah! <laughs> 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 Five minutes up, guys. Fun time's over. You guys didn't. <laughs> all you guys did is just re wasted all your points on stupid fucking moaning sound. <laughs> 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 but Ando, seriously. You don't need talent. You need luck. In this world. In this world. No matter how. Come in, come in, come in, come in. <laughs> coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. I'm coming in. Man, that overlapping is. wild. <laughs> 
<laughs> Thank you for being here on the uh, 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 room. Sorry, oh my god, fuck my life. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. Crossing over the world. I'll I'll go over to Typhoon later. Okay, I'll see you there later. I'll go to your what your venue? Is it your FC house or your personal house? Okay, never mind. The goblet somewhere. I got the picture. Don't worry about it. I'll see you later. Bye bye. A personal house. Okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> <coughs> Yeah, I used to play Borderlands as well with my friends, but uh, because Studio took a hiatus, so we all took a hiatus for Borderlands gaming. Otherwise, I ha I would have to schedule on every Thursday, I think. I forgot. I don't even remember. Yeah, it's been like months. Anyways, thank you for being here, you guys. I love you all. Uh, our, I'm still baffled by you all. Uh, actually spending time with me and listening to me read uh, it's still something that shocks me to my core every single time I do this kind of stream uh, but I truly appreciate all of you and I hope that you all have a great week ahead and a very very smooth Monday thank you and I shall see you guys on Wednesday have a nice day guys and I'll send you all off with my favorite song in the world Have you ever had a dream that oh, he had that me come? You, you, you can do, you skip, you do, you skip, you want to do, you skip. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye, guys. I love you all. See y'all.